Some people may find that you know, following your passion can even be an overrated thing. So this might be because you know, maybe it doesn't always pay the bills. You know, I'm an artist, so this is something I've had to think about as well. Um, maybe it didn't align with your life circumstances that you're going through at the time. Um, or maybe some people aren't really that passionate about anything in particular. Maybe they've got a lot of things that they like, but haven't really found that thing that's really screaming their name. Through my own experience, I've learned to think about what I don't like rather than what I do like, because this has helped me to really narrow it down to, okay, I don't like doing this. I don't think I really fit into this specific bracket. So it's not really the natural path that I should be following. So this helped me to gain a bit more clarity and to kind of figure out this was my direction and art is the career I wanted to pursue. So there's something that Kyle's grandfather actually used to say that he told me and it really stuck with me and I, I think it's a really just a nice comment that he made. Um, he used to say, I've never worked a day in my life and he was an architect who would wake up I think at 4 a.m. every morning, be happy to go downstairs, do his thing, and never felt like it was a hassle, never felt like it was a problem. And I feel like, you know, I often think to myself, what if all of us were doing what we loved? What if all of us could do our passion and what we were born to do? Wouldn't we all be maybe a bit more happier? Maybe we'd give a lot more energy and effort into our day-to-day -day jobs. Um, we'd probably feel like we were happier to give better service as well. Um, just think about the potential of that and you know, our world as we know it could, could change. So how did I find my own passion? For me, I think I always knew what I wanted to do from a young age. I always knew I wanted to be a creative person. I just didn't know exactly what it was. So when I even look back at my childhood, I think, I think about how I used to get, you know, crayons and texas and all of that kind of stuff and that would be like my pride and joy, like my colouring in book, that was my pride and joy. Um, I would always pick out pictures that I loved the most and I would forget about the ones I didn't like, I didn't want to colour them in, but getting like one of those art cases, you know, it, had, it was fully decked out, it had everything, in it. it had stickers, texas, crayons, you name it, it had it and that was my, my thing, I loved it. Um, and everything had its place as well. Like, if I had it in the rainbow colour, it couldn't be out of place. It had to be put perfectly back. So I think that if, if you can see from a child's, you know, activities and just how they behave, you can notice, I guess, it, it maybe gives clues to what they're going to become when they're a bit older. And that was definitely the case for me. So I think that people can also be passionate about many things. So if, you're, um, if it resonates with you and you, know, you feel like that's where you belong, that's probably your life purpose as well. Um, if you are multi-passionate, you could also take the synergy of multiple things and combine it to create something even better, you know, something unique and one of a kind. When you've found your passion, I feel like you'll also know it. So it will be the thing that you think about when you wake up in the morning. It's the thing that you think about uh, before you go to sleep at night. Like it never leaves you. Um, you're always probably thinking about how can I improve? How can I do better? How can I give better service? Um, and this, I think if you're in a service-based industry, it's your joy to give better service. Passion can also grow. So you might start on a path and you might eventually become more and more interested in this thing that you're doing. To, and you might eventually get to a point where you say, I want to do this every day. And this was the case for me. So like I said, I always knew I wanted to be creative, but I didn't know what exactly I wanted to do. So I actually studied as a graphic designer. That's what I qualified in. And I always looked at painting as something that was maybe a bit unobtainable or maybe a little bit out of my reach. Um, I don't know why, but somehow it seemed harder. Like it was a, a big challenge. But once I started painting, I realized, you know, push yourself, get better and better and better at it. And eventually, even with myself, like I've noticed how my skills have developed over the years. And 
I think sometimes when you push yourself out of that comfort zone, you know, something wonderful can really happen. And today, painting is my main medium that I use. So that's something that I've thought was awesome. So why do I create artworks? What is the purpose of art um, other than ha decorating your walls and making it look pretty? Well, my simple philosophy is that happy walls make happy people. That's what I say. So it might not be as simple as that. There might be a bit more to it. But I think that just a simple quote like that is something that you can live by. Owning some type of artwork is really important to your psychological well-being as well. It can take something that you are trying to say, um, it can make that very clear without you even having to say a word. It's all visual. Ultimately, art should reflect the human condition. It, in a way, preserves the emotion of the artist um, suspended in the time that that artwork was actually created. The beauty of art is that it's also so subjective. No one knows how you, like, each individual person is going to react to that artwork. So, for example, someone might look at this artwork and be instantly drawn to the cosmos and the night sky and the detail in that. And they might feel like they've been transported to another place. Whereas someone else might be drawn to this one and the vibrant colours and the textures that have been used. You just, you don't know how people are going to react to that. So that's the beauty of art. Art also has the ability to transform a space in your home or your office and make it feel completely different as the mood is set through the statement that that artwork is making. My own artwork usually depicts the female form, um, skyscapes and some mythology as well. This combined with a rich colour palette creates a wonderful atmosphere that it invites the viewer to transcend into another realm of infinite possibilities. My intention through my art is to not only depict beauty in its many forms, but to also bring more light and wonder into the world. There are endless possibilities when it comes to creativity, and the reason why art is so special is that the artist is creating something purely from their brain. It's never been created before, and no one knows how it's going to turn out, and that's that's the beauty of it. It has the ability to change the social situation of the world as well through visual representations rather than words. So what people have said or what they are saying at the current moment may be forgotten. We might forget what people have said, but art will always stay the same. It's almost frozen from the time it was created until now. Its meaning and symbology will always remain the same. Art speaks to the higher self, the subconscious mind, the intuitive and the emotional. Much of what we do in our day-to-day -day lives is very left brain oriented. It's very much analytical and logical thinking. Whereas art invites us to delve deeper into the right side of the brain and to become more in touch with the subconscious, to let ourselves just process it and feel, feel what we feel from it. This is why I do what I do. So I want to speak to people in a way that is personal to them. I want to evoke emotions and connection without saying anything. I want to serve as a connector between the higher self and explore subjects that are, that are out of the ordinary and stimulate conversation. So we have seen how so many art movements of the past have also shaped our world that we live in today. So you've got Cubism, Postmodernism, uh, Art Nouveau, Art Deco, all of these movements in our past has shaped the world that we live in today. It's got a huge impact on our society. It's had our place in our history and it's also paved the, paved the way for much of the change in the world that we live in today. With its ability to transcend language, culture and different subject matters, the influence art has on society is almost uh, impossible to quantify. But in my opinion, art influence, influences society by changing opinions, instilling values and translating experiences across space and time. Art has the ability to affect your very own sense of self. This is why it is so important and why I chose to become an artist. So to summarise everything that I've just spoken about, I think that we all have our own inner creativity deep within ourselves. And it's, I think, such a great thing to be able to harness this and get to know what we like and what we dislike. This is going to help you to find your own passion. 
So when we dedicate our time and our energy every day to practice what we love and what we're doing, we're becoming the best versions of ourselves. That's what I believe. I'd like to end by saying, let us all find our passion. Let us all find what we love to do, our life purpose, and feel like we can wake up every day feeling like we don't ever have to work another day in our lives. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.